Okay, so kids, today is a very simple lesson. I'm going to teach you an important skill that you're going to use, not just today, but in your secondary school and even up to your university as well. And that is spotting the main ideas and the supporting details in anything that you read. Okay, as, as you all know, we are studying information text, right? We are looking at, in this case, a story or a written piece about Chek Jawa. Okay, and it's, this author is telling us about Chek Jawa and the things that live there. In specific, the echinoderms. Can you all remember? We were talking about them. Right, uh, very quickly now, uh, Caitlin, can you tell me uh, if you can remember what is an echinoderm? Can you give me another name for an echinoderm? Uh, Caitlin, if you can unmute yourself and tell me if you can remember. If you can't, it's okay. Echinoderm is a type of sea star. Very good. Thank you very much. So an echinoderm is a sea star, isn't it? Right. It's a special kind of animal that lives in Chek Jawa. It's called an echinoderm. Another name for it is a sea star. Very good. So Caitlin can remember roughly what we have learned in the previous lesson when we went through this. Okay. So we are going to identify some main ideas from this text. But before that, I'm going to go through this text really quickly, super fast, like lightning speed. Okay, so are you all ready? Are you all ready? Okay, good. So I'm just going to go through this really quickly, all right? Um, so if you remember in this particular um, passage, we talked about how Chek Jawa is a place in Pulau Ubin and it is a place full of animals. Okay, somebody's uh, mic is not muted. Who is it? Hidaya, can you please mute your microphone? Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. So like I said, uh, basic etiquette, please make sure that you are muted. Check at all times that your microphone is muted. Otherwise, something like this might happen. We might end up disturbing the other people with our background noise. Okay. So let's keep our microphones muted unless Mr. Pang calls on you. Okay. So where was I? Yes. Chik Jawa is a wetland, right? It's a place that has a lot of different animals and plants. Okay. And remember, we talked about how it is a very, very interesting place because it has a rich collection of plants and animals. Can you see here? Rich collection of plants and animals. Okay. So um, if I can just highlight this, okay, there's a rich collection of plants and animals. Okay. Rich collection of plants, birds and animals, right? We talked about this. Now, if I go back to today's uh, worksheet, which we are going to be doing, uh, you'll see that they have captured the first main idea. Chek Java wetlands is a place rich in nature. Okay, and what are the supporting details that tell me that it's a place rich in nature? Well, a botanist, a botanist is someone who studies plants, remember, discovered this rich collection of plants. Okay, plants and animals are found there that are not found anywhere else in Singapore. That's the second supporting detail. And now it is a protected area for people to learn and enjoy nature. That is the third supporting detail. Okay, can you all see? the relationship between the main idea and the supporting details. If you can, please give me a nod. Okay, very good. Now, it is important that you see the connection. A main idea is something like a title, right? And a supporting detail is something like what gives you more information about that title. Okay, let me give you an example about this. Okay, uh, can someone suggest a topic? Uh, like any kind of topic. Let me see who I can ask to suggest the topic. Uh, let's see. Um, mm, who would like to suggest a topic? Uh, a topic about something around you. Can be an animal, can be a plant, can be anything. Um, something you're really interested in. Anybody? Anybody would like to suggest a topic? You want to raise your hands and just give me a one word topic. Okay, Ethan, go ahead. Technology. Technology. Okay, technology. Right. Okay, so um, how many of you love technology? Please wave your hands around like you're really, 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 really excited. Wave your hands around. Yeah, right. I think most of us are excited about technology, right? Okay, now, um, can we be a little bit more specific here? What kind of technology are we really excited about? Can someone just raise your hands? Okay, Keen, go ahead. Give me one specific example of technology. 
Laptop. Laptop, okay, right? Laptops, okay. So let's say we're talking about portable computers, very much like something like this, okay? So maybe a laptop, okay? Something that is portable, something that you can carry around, okay? Right, so now can, so let's say my main idea is laptops, right? Laptops or laptops are really cool or laptops are really interesting. Can someone give me some supporting details? Give me more information about this topic, anyone? Anybody really into laptops and would like to give me one piece of information you want to share with everybody? Anyone? Anyone? I'm seeing all of you looking really intense here. Is there anybody you want to wave your hand so that I can see? Something about laptops. Okay, I tell you what, let's make it even easier. Let's change the topic to handphones. Okay, any kind of handphones, right? Can anyone tell me something really cool that you know about handphones? Anyone? Okay, Shalina, go ahead. Unmute yourself and tell me. Games. All right, so we can play mobile games on our handphones. Hmm, a little bit naughty of a point, but never mind. Okay, I take it. Okay, so it's a supporting detail, right? So under the title of handphones or handphones are cool, I can have a little supporting detail called I can play games on handphones. Excellent. Can someone give me another supporting detail? about handphones besides games. I hope that's not the only thing you do on handphones. Adele, go ahead. Adele first, then Ishan later. Yeah, go, Adele. You can take photos. Ah, very good. Handphones can take photos. And nowadays, handphones can take really nice photos, right? Awesome, okay. Uh, Ishan, do you want to add to that? Uh, can take WhatsApp. Okay, right. I can communicate with other people using apps like WhatsApp. Okay, Caitlin, go ahead. One last one. We can video call with each other. Yes, we can have video conferencing calls where I can see the face of my friend or my loved one, right? Okay, so let me summarize. Huh? The main idea here is handphones are cool, right? The supporting details are I can play games on them. I can communicate with my friends through apps like WhatsApp. And I can use the video call function to see the faces of my loved ones, right? So can you see main idea is the big title. And then supporting ideas or supporting details are the additional pieces of information that I attach to that main idea. Everybody clear? It's pretty cool, right? So anything you read uh, can be done like this. If I read about hamburgers, I can use the same pattern. If I read about dinosaurs, I can use the same pattern. If I read about families, I can use the same pattern. If I'm reading my signs, right? If I'm reading about living things versus non-living things, I can also use the same pattern. Main idea and supporting details about what I am reading about, okay? So whenever you are reading any information text, it's always good to have this in mind. What's the main idea? Like if I had to put a title to what I'm reading, what would that title or main idea be? And what are the supporting details that go into giving me more information about that title? Is everybody clear about main idea and supporting detail? Right, that's all I'm going to teach you today, right? Is it easy? Is it easy to understand? Okay, so now here is the trick question. Huh? And I want you to look at this. Huh? Okay, can you see here, right? This is what we're going to do today, okay? Very easy. Huh? Before we do this, huh, I ask you this trick question. Huh? It's very easy. The answer is there. Huh? In the whole story on Czech Java, right? In the whole writing on Czech Java, right? How many main ideas do you think that can there only be one main idea or are there many main ideas? Okay, if you think there is one main idea, okay, I want you to, you know, there is a reaction button, right? You know, there's a reaction button, right? Can you all see the reaction button there? Can you see it now? Okay, can you see the word reaction? Okay, ah, if you think that there's only one main idea for the whole story, right? Whole thing, ah, you put a thumbs up. If you think right that there is more than one main idea, right? I want you to put the heart, the heart. Okay, so thumbs up if it's one idea, heart if it's more than one main idea. Thumbs up if it's one idea, heart. Oh yo, everybody heart heart, Mr. Pang ah, huh? everybody heart 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 ah, huh? ayo. Okay, heart heart heart. Okay, I see one thumbs up there. Okay, Adele has one thumbs up. Okay, uh, Adele thinks Mr. Pang is cool. Okay, whatever. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs up, heart, heart, heart. Some of you not sure. Okay, your heart is disappearing. Okay, never mind. Right, so I see the majority of you are putting hearts. Okay, 
and I see one or two of you are putting thumbs up. Actually, you're both correct. Okay, you're both correct. Huh? But, but let, let me tell you why you're both correct. Okay, there are many, actually, there are many, there can be many main ideas in one story, but there's only one most important main idea. Do you all get what Mr. Pang is saying? Okay, so there are many main ideas in one story, but in one story, there's always one most important idea. That's why you have a title, right? The stars of Chek Java, right? That title is the most important idea. Then underneath that idea, there are many other main ideas. There are many main ideas. So in a sense, those who are stars, uh, those who are thumbs up, you're correct. In some ways, those who are hearted, you are also correct. Okay, so there are no losers today. Everybody is a winner. Okay, now any questions at this point before I go into doing the worksheet? No, ah? Okay, ah? So now let's go into the second main idea. Okay, now my question to you is this. The first part of the story dealt with how Czech Java is a place that is, that is full of different kinds of animals, right? Full of different kinds of animals okay now what do you think the second main idea is if i go back to the story right and then i look at the next few pages right what are the next few pages about uh? is it about all the different other kinds of animals or am i only focusing on one type of animal ada uh, ada go ahead Gosh. sorry Jeez. Okay, very good. So I am not, did I talk about any other animal after this already? No, right? The whole, the whole story after this uh, is all about sea stars already. Okay, it's all about different kinds of sea stars, right? So what do you think the next main idea is going to be about then? It's obviously going to be about, yeah, that's right. It's going to be about sea stars. Okay, so I'm going to write over here under my second main idea and I want all of you to write along with me, okay? Right? All of you are right, right along with me. Huh? Please write this down, okay? And I want you to highlight the word echinoderms. Because this is going to be what the entire remainder of Czech Java is about. Do you all agree with me? Right? We don't see any other animal, right? We only talk about sea stars going forward. Okay, and of course, the name, the scientific name for sea stars is echinoderms. Have you all finished writing this down? Look, you should see sea stars, the echinoderms. And I want you to highlight the word echinoderms because this is going to link to our supporting detail, our supporting detail, right? So what are the supporting details? The first thing I need to then explain, what do you think is the first supporting detail I need to give? And why did I highlight echinoderm? What do you think I'm going to do next under supporting detail? Yadavi, any ideas? Um, you're going to write what it's about. Uh, what is what about? What is echinoderms about? Yes, very good. I am going to explain. Because if I am not an expert, do I know what echinoderm is? Don't know, right? If you go to your younger brother or sister, hey, hello, Titi. Hello, Meme. What is echinoderm? Ah? Do you think your younger brother or sister will be able to tell you what's an echinoderm? Do you think that, oh, an echinoderm is a sea star that has between three to five arms and it has a spiny skin? Do you think your younger brother or sister would talk to you like that? Weird, right? If it is, I'll be like, yee, creepy, right? Okay, so normally people don't know what these kinds of scientific terms mean, right? If you go outside, uh, you see an uncle on the street, hey, uncle, or you see auntie on the street, hey, auntie, you ask, auntie, what's an echinoderm? You think the auntie will go, oh, an echinoderm is an extremely rare uh, five to three legged creature with spiny skin. You can find them in the reefs and corals of Czech Jawa. Do you think they'll answer you like this? No. So you need to give information so that people can understand what your main idea is about. If you just say, sea stars are echinoderms, then I will go, huh? What are echinoderms? Remember, Mr. Pang said you cannot say, huh, right? Huh is very rude, right? You say, excuse me, right? So I'm sorry. Excuse me, what is an echinoderm? 
right? So you have to give that information. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to cross over to supporting details. We're going to put a little bullet point here, like what they did on top. You know, you can put, you know, make it a little bit darker and a little bit rounder, like you see me do. Okay, and then we're going to write echinoderms. What are echinoderms, ah? by the way? And anyone? Can you read it from what you see on the screen? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, you're not seeing it on the screen. Let me let me change the screen. Huh? Okay, let's go back to where we were before. What is an echinoderma? Can you see on the screen there? I drew an arrow even to connect, 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 right? Yeah, so you should be able to see it, right? Shalina, please don't get distracted. If I see you getting distracted again, I will eject you from this meeting. Huh? Thank you very much. Okay, I need everybody to be fully attentive. Okay, Rishana, go ahead. Tell me, what's an echinoderm? Spiny skin. Okay, so it's a creature with a spiny skin, right? Okay, so I'm going to go back here. Echinoderms. Okay, and I want to make sure that I... I'm sorry, give me a minute. I want to make sure that I write it really clearly. Echinoderms are creatures with spiny skin. And I want to write really neatly because when I'm taking notes and I'm writing about what I'm reading, I want to be able to look back later and read it and not be able to be confused because of my bad handwriting, right? So. Echinoderms are creatures with spiny skin. Wonderful. Um, okay, Roshanna, thank you. You can put your hands down now. You can like lower your hand. Okay, thank you. Otherwise, you will constantly be in a corner of my vision. Okay, Roshanna, ah, yes, good. Uh, can anyone tell me what I should highlight here? What, what are the two most important words in this sentence I have just written? Ada, go ahead. Spiny skin. Hmm, thank you. All right. Excellent. So let's highlight spiny skin. That's really important because that's the keyword, right? What's an echinoderm? An echinoderm is a creature with spiny skin. Uh, are human beings echinoderms? No. Do we have spiny skin? <laughs> no. no, right? Yeah. When we, when we get angry, spines don't shoot up of us, right? Yeah, we're not like, you know, like porcupines, right? Yeah, so we're not echinoderms, okay? Echinoderms specifically refer to sea stars or starfish. Uh, we are called homo sapiens or human beings, right? We don't have spiny skin. Okay, next. Uh, can anyone tell me what other important information about echinoderms I can find here? Okay, it's all actually, sorry, it's, it's, it's not loading very clearly. Give me a minute, huh? Hmm. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's let's stay here for a while. Huh? Um, this paragraph contains some other information, okay, that is special to echinoderms. What else can I say about echinoderms besides the fact that they have spiny skin? Anyone? Please wave your hands about if you can see something in this paragraph that shows me another supporting detail about echinoderms. Anyone? Wave your hands about. Can you see something else? Okay. Please raise your hands. Oh, Javier, go. Javier, go. Echinoderms mm -hmm. have neither scales or backbones. Yeah, very good. They have neither scales nor backbones. Excellent. Okay. So here we go. Let's go back here. Right. And then let's put down here. We already wrote the word echinoderms here. So I don't need to write echinoderms again. I use another word to substitute. What word do I use to replace echinoderms with? It's a pronoun, right? Jaline, go. Go, Jaline. They. Yes, very good. So remember, I don't want to keep calling your name, right? Jaline, 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 Jaline. Be very irritating, right? So I replace your name or the name of the echinoderms with a pronoun, right? Pronouns are polite. That's why they're called pronouns, they're polite, okay? You don't keep referring to the person's name, you can replace that person's name with the pronoun. In this case, echinoderms are plural, more than one. So they have 
neither scales nor backbones. Okay, without referring to the text, huh? can you remember what animal has scales and backbones? Yes, Josiah, go. Uh, fish. Yeah, very good. Very good. Fish have scales and backbones. Echinoderms don't have scales and they don't have backbones. So they're not fish. Okay, they're not fish. Uh, do human beings have scales? Do we have a backbone? Ah, no, ah. We don't have backbone. Yeah, ah. It has backbone, ah. but not scales. Oh, yes, that's right. Thank you, Yishen. Yeah. But some of you are. Ah, you are just shaking your head, ah. that means you think human beings have no backbones, ah. then we will be like flopping around like jellyfish. We won't have the ability to stand up straight. We'll be like, oh, yeah. oh, I can't stand. Oh, floppy, floppy. Okay, yeah. so we do have a backbone, but yeah. we don't have Javen. Ah, please mute yourself. Thank you. Caitlin, yes, go ahead. Yes, do you raise your hands, Caitlin? I, yep. I went to Pulau Ubin on Sunday and saw a sea star. Oh, cool. Maybe you can share some pictures with us, okay? Yeah, if you if you share some pictures with Mr. Pang, Mr. Pang will share the picture with everybody so we can see it for the next Zoom session. Okay, where, okay, I'll brief you about it later. Quick, let's finish this. Okay, one last information detail and then we can move on to the next main idea. And then we are done already, okay? Like I said, very fast, okay? Now, can you see over here in this paragraph that there is there are some examples given of other types of echinoderms besides sea stars. Can you spot what other types of echinoderms there are? Javier, go. Let's finish this quickly. Sea cucumbers and sea urchins. Yes, okay. You all know what sea urchins, sea cucumber, right? Okay, some of you have eaten, eaten some of them before, right? Yeah, okay, they are both edible. Huh? Okay, so also echinoderms. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to write down there, okay? Sea cucumbers. And I think three supporting details are good enough. And sea urchins are also echinoderms. I hope you all can fit this into the box. I think you should have enough space, right? I'm just asking you to write three points, okay? And then go ahead and highlight what were the important words that we missed just now? Neither scales nor backbones. And then I'm going to highlight sea cucumbers and sea urchins, okay? So in the supporting details, I've told you what echinoderms are. They are creatures with spiny skin. I told you what echinoderms are not. They are not fish. They don't have scales or backbones. And I've given you two examples of other echinoderms besides sea stars namely the sea cucumbers and the sea urchins, okay? Can you all see the supporting details? It gives me more information about echinoderms. Hmm? Lucas, if you can see, not your head. Yeah, okay, awesome. Okay, Kaden, okay? Right, right, very good. Now, uh, you have all been wonderful. We are finishing off already, okay? Just one last main idea, okay? And then we are done for the day. Okay, so let's go back out to the main idea and uh, can you remember when we were doing our writing on sea stars there was we were we had four different categories right can you remember what some of these categories were we divided sea stars up into different categories right can you remember what some of these categories were anybody can remember how did we compare them what did we use to compare them anyone remember they are different in what way Ah, Josiah, go. Appearance. Appearance, very good. Now, if I look at the word appearance, right, what kind of appearance were we comparing? Remember, there were three things we were comparing about the appearance, right? Ah, Javen, go. What did we compare about the appearance? Good, Javen. Body size. Size. What else? Can you think of anything else? Uh, no. Okay, thank you. Javier, can you think of something else? Oh, sorry, Yadavi, Yadavi. Sorry, Javier, you answered before. Yadavi, go. What else? Colors and shapes. Very good. Okay, so there we go. Let's write. They come in 
different. Right, just now Javen mentioned sizes. Oops, sorry. Colors, right? The other view mentioned colors and shapes. Okay, so their shapes differ, right? There's some that are more boxy, some that are more elongated. That means longer their arms, right? So they come in different shapes. Okay, now uh, let's highlight sizes, colors, and shapes. Okay, those are the important words there. We're finishing off now. We're coming very quickly. Now, when we talk about comparing them in terms of sizes, colors, and shapes, can you tell me what they share? They all share in common. What do all C stars share in common? Their shape is all like what? Anyone? Chloe, can you tell me what all C stars look like? They are all the same in that they look like what? A star. Very good. There we go. Okay, so let's begin with something that they all share in common. Okay. Thank you, Chloe. Let's put a bullet point. They are all shaped because we're talking about sea stars here, right? Not talking about sea urchin, ah. not talking about sea cucumber. Ah. They don't look like stars, ah. but sea stars all look like stars. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. That's great. Okay. Let's highlight shape like stars. Chloe has given us that. And now, give me one more detail. Uh, what is different about them? Nathaniel, can you tell me one thing that's different about, you know, the five different sea stars that we studied? Remember, we talked about the box, we talked about the sun, flower, sea star, and all of that. Nathaniel, can you tell me what's different about them? Yeah, one thing. Can you remember? It's very easy. Think about number. Think about number. What is different about the number? Oh, I see so many people with their hands raised. Okay, let's be patient, okay? Nat, anything? Ooh, I'm spot for choice. So many people are raising their hands. Okay. Okay, thank you, Nathaniel. Rish Rishana, go ahead. Let's see if Rishana can get it. Number of arms they have. Very good, right? So the number of arms are different, right? Okay, they have different numbers of arms. Can you still remember which one has the most number of arms. I think it was 24, right? 24 arms, right? Yeah. Shalina, can you remember? Sunflower sea star. Yeah, correct. The sunflower sea star. And which one had the least number of arms? Can anybody remember? Anybody? Least number of arms. Kim? The biscuit sea star. Yeah, the biscuit sea star. Oh, awesome. You guys, are you all looking at your books right now? Hmm? Are you referencing your books? Otherwise, you have an amazing memory. Great. Even Mr. Pang couldn't remember that one. Good job, kids. All right. So biscuit sea stars, three to five, all the way up to sunflower sea star, 24. Very different indeed. But do they all look like stars? Yeah. Okay. So I'm using similarities and differences to compare sea stars in the same family. All right. But they all look different. Very much like your brother and your sister will look different from you. Okay. But I'm sure we all have two hands and two legs. Uh. Your brother and sister don't have four hands and six legs, right? Uh, so we, we are not different that way. Uh. All human beings have two arms and two legs. Please look for me to see if you can have, find a human being with 18 arms and 24 legs. Uh, I don't think you can find that. Huh? Okay, human beings don't come in those shapes and sizes. We only differ in size and color, but we don't differ in number of arms. Huh? Okay, so you can't compare all animals that way. Okay, but in this case, the sea stars do come in different arms. Can you imagine if, if daddy and mommy had like an extra pair of arms, then they can help you or they can help your brother and sister at the same time. Right, how useful that would be. Hmm, 
Yes, yes. Yeah. Imagine, uh, maybe next time we can invent robotic arms that help us to do work while we are doing something else. Okay. Hmm. That might be an interesting idea. Okay. So I think we're good. These two points are good enough. You don't need, always need to have three. Two supporting details are good enough. Sorry, Javier, can you lower your hand? It's a bit distracting to see you constantly with your hand raised. Okay, lower your hands. Okay, and we are done for the day. Congratulations, everybody. It is 11.34. I am true to my word. Huh? I always keep my promises. Huh? I said 11.35, it's now 11.34. I just want to make a few quick announcements before I let you all go and enjoy the rest of your day, okay? So I will release an SLS homework, a listening task, okay? Uh, homework huh? uh, on your SLS. Uh, please go and check your SLS. It will contain instructions on what you need to do. You need your green booklet, okay, to do your homework, right? But the audio and everything will be on SLS. I will send a message to your parents uh, tomorrow to tell you when that assignment will go live and when you can start to do it, okay? You can have the rest of the holiday to do it, okay? No hurry. Anytime you want to do, you do, okay? And it's very easy. It's just one page. Then you just listen and you just write a few short words, okay? Uh, yes, Caitlin, did you raise your hands, my dear? Can we do it later? Uh, not later, because Mr. Pang hasn't prepared it. I still have to record my voice. I have to read it out. Once I finish recording, I will let your parents know. Okay? Right? You know, uh, you all do lessons very easy. Uh. Mr. Pang has to prepare a lot beforehand, you know. Right? The whole of last night I was preparing for today and everything. So it may seem very short to you, but I have to prepare, okay? So please be patient. Let me finish preparing. Then I will let all of you know when it is ready. But on your side, not a lot of work, I promise you. So you have a restful holiday. I don't want to overwork you. Okay. Second thing is next week, we will have another Zoom session, right? Also half an hour at the same time on the same day, Tuesday, 11 o'clock. We will do exactly what, like what we do today. Is that okay? The only problem is that Mr. Pang will not be in Singapore. I will be in Australia. So I will be Zooming with you from Adelaide, which means my connection might be a little bit unstable. So I apologize in advance. Okay. I don't know what it's going to be like there. Okay. I will try my best. Yeah, wait, nah, let me finish. Nah. Then I'll take questions. Nah. If let's say next week doesn't work out, I will do a makeup with you when I'm back in Singapore. Is that okay? But we will still stick to our original appointment next Tuesday, which is the 14th of June at 11 o'clock. If you can't make it, don't worry. I will record the session and I will send the recording to you so you can view it and do your homework. Okay, do not worry about that. All right, let me stop sharing uh, so you can see my face. Okay, so um, yes. At this point in time, any problems or any uh, challenges? If you can't finish, don't worry. I will send a screenshot of what we did uh, through your parents' chat as well. Okay, so don't worry about that. The recording, the link, I will also send to your parents so that you can review this. Because it's, like I said, very important lesson. Huh? Main ideas and supporting details. You will use this strategy all the way to university. It's super important. So please learn this well and apply this everywhere you go. Every time you read a newspaper article, every time you see something online, think about main ideas and supporting details, all right? Train your brain, train your brain to think that way and you'll be super, super good, all right? Now, uh, any questions besides what I've just covered? It's 11.37, I overshot by two minutes, but not my fault because you were asking me questions. Any more? If not, then uh, one last thing, next week, Tuesday, let's have a fun session. So I want you all to come wearing some kind of hat. Okay, wear a funny hat or, or you know, put something over your head. Yeah, can be any kind of hat. Lah. You can put a blanket over your head also. Lah. Okay, or you can put a wig on your head or you can, you know, wear something really funny. And then uh, we can have a, we can have a most interesting headdress award. Okay, we can all vote and see who we think is the most, uh, most funny and hilarious hat. Okay, uh, then that person will win a small prize when we go back to school. Can? Okay, will that be fun? Okay, so we'll take about uh, five minutes, then I'll also have a poll where you can vote, okay, for who you think is the most um, uh, uh, funny uh, headdress. Can? Right, so that will be our next Tuesday, 14th of June lesson. Again, short lesson, I won't take very long, it'll just be a page of work, and uh, I'll just review some strategies with you. If you have no questions at all, then you are free to go. Thank you very much for your attention and attendance. I will see you next week. Same time, same channel. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Good job, everybody. Good job. I will use this have as my week. Oh, okay. That's see nice. Next, see you next see week. See you next bye. week. Bye. 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 So good Howdy. to see you all again. Bye.
Don't play games on a computer. Go read a book. Go outside. Run around. Do something outside. Bye. Okay, Mr. Bang's ending the call now. See you. Bye.